Today, let's study the Word of God about why Heavenly Mother is the answer. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 10, verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to receive eternal life? Jesus said, What is written in the Bible? How do you read it? Then the man said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. Jesus said, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Then, can we love God if we do not know God? Can you love someone you've never known? The one you've never seen? You need to know and have experiences with the person, right? Let's see Luke chapter 18, verse 18. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He asked the same question. In Luke chapter 10, verse 25, an expert in the law asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. He kept all the laws already. He knew the laws well. Verse 22, When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad, because he was a man of great wealth. Here, a ruler asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? And the expert in the law too asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Let's move on to Mark chapter 10, verse 17. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Now they are asking Jesus about how to receive eternal life. And Jesus gave them many answers. But in conclusion, the answer was to love God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their strength, and with all their mind. To this question, what must we do to receive eternal life? Jesus gave the answer. First, we need to know God. When we know God and love God, and when we have faith in God, we can receive eternal life. Then, let's think about eternal life through the principle of the world. Who is the closest to life? Every living thing in the world has its mother. A bird in the sky has its mommy bird. A fish in the sea has its mommy fish. Every animal on the ground has its mother. A human being too has his mother. Without a mother, there is no life. What must we do to receive eternal life? If someone asks this question in this age, Jesus would give him a simple answer. However, the age of the Son was not the time for Jerusalem Heavenly Mother to appear. So what did Jesus say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. You should do this. Are you asking me how to receive eternal life? Do this and you will live. 
When we don't know God the Father and God the Mother, we cannot receive God the Father and God the Mother. If we do not accept them, can we go to the eternal kingdom of heaven? Never. If we cannot go to heaven, that means we cannot live forever. When God created the earth, God made it with a purpose. He made living things on the earth, unlike other planets or stars in the universe. By doing that, what did God want to teach mankind? Here, we can see God's clear intent and will. Let's go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 19 reads, What may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been what? Have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. We can see God's existence through all things created by God. We can understand the spiritual world through all things created by God. Let's look at Revelation chapter 4, verse 10. The twenty-four elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For You created all things, and by Your will they were created and have their being. God created all things. By His will, they all exist. For what did God create this world where we are living? And what is His providence of creating all things in this world? As for all living things, from small insects to animals, is there a single creature that has no mother? Birds flying in the sky, fish swimming in the sea, and all kinds of animals running around the field, they all have their mothers. Without mothers, no life can be born. This is how God created life to be given. It was found that life can be given to children only through their mother's mitochondrial DNA. Then, who created it in this way? It is God. According to Revelation chapter 4 and Romans chapter 1, God made known to us His invisible divine nature through all creation. When a man asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus did nothing but answer, Love your God. When we love God, we can understand who God is and know that there exists God the Father and God the Mother. Since we have received God the Mother, we can enter the kingdom of God through her. Jesus' answer was simple. Love God. This was the answer He gave us 2,000 years ago. Mother is the answer for all things. On this earth, where we were destined to die forever, the only hope we can have here is Mother. As for the fact that God the Mother is our solution, let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, there is our Father. On earth, too, there are 
fathers. We know that very well. Let's see the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. Of course, she does not refer to a human mother on the earth. Above means heaven. The Jerusalem in heaven is free, and she is our mother. Like this, the Bible clearly awakens us to the fact that we have our mother of our spirits. We are taught things on earth are a copy and shadow of things in heaven. Today, some say, why does the Church of God believe in God the Mother? That's absurd. Actually, what is absurd is that they do not believe in God the Mother. We need to ask them back, through what can you receive eternal life without Heavenly Mother? On this Sabbath day, we realize once again that Mother is the only solution for everything. The one who protects us and keeps us safe on the day of distress is God the Mother. The one who gives us love when we go through hardships and when we are lonely is God the Mother. Father's love is also great. But when it comes to protecting children, no one else can surpass a mother's power in this world. There is an old story about a family in America. The father and mother of a family were in the field for just a moment. From a distance, they saw a fire breaking out in their house and smoke rising up. As their baby was sleeping in the house, they were in shock and ran to it. The house already became a sea of fire and it was hard to enter the house. In this crisis, the father was thinking logically. But the mother's only thought was to save her child. The mother came into the burning house and the husband followed her to protect his wife. The first floor was all ablaze, so they had to jump out of the second floor. Since then, the husband came to limp, and the wife got burns all over her body. The child grew and entered school. Many students mocked her. The child came to have resentment toward her mom and dad. Later, the mom showed her a picture of her dad in his younger days. Your dad was wonderful. He was healthy and had strong legs. And there was a very beautiful woman standing right beside her dad. This is your mom. The child asked her mom how her dad came to be a cripple. And her mother explained, while we were in the field, a fire broke out in the house. As you were sleeping inside it, I ran into the fire to save you. And your dad too followed me to protect us. Your dad jumped from the second floor, holding you and me in his arms. Through this, he became a cripple, and my face became like this. However, the child was not harmed at all. Then the child shed heavy tears, finally knowing why her dad's legs and mom's face were like that. Since then, she boasted about her mom and dad when others made fun of her. My mom and dad are full of so much love. She boasted about her parents proudly. My mom and dad are great people with so much love. If they had thought of their own life and safety, I would not have been here today as a friend of yours. This is how she came to be proud of her mom and dad and boasted about them more and more. Today, we should remember Heavenly Father and Mother who have come to this earth to give us eternal life, 
leaving all their heavenly glory behind. We may think that we can live on this earth, breathing, eating and drinking, because all the necessary conditions have always been there. Actually, however, God has provided all these conditions for us. God also created fathers and mothers when He made all things in order to help us, who forgot our previous life in heaven, realize the existence of father and mother. Children are given life through their fathers and mothers, particularly unless they inherit the mitochondrial DNA, the life-giving DNA from their mothers, they cannot become living beings. God has revealed this fact in the principle of creation. Life on this earth is temporary and limited. In order to go to the eternal world, not a transient world, we need eternal life. Then through whom can we receive eternal life? As we are given human life through our human mothers on this earth, so we are given spiritual life through our Heavenly Mother, the Eternal Mother of our spirits. To help us realize this fact, Heavenly Father ascended into heaven first and let Heavenly Mother live with us here on earth. Mother is the answer to everything. When a child is in a dangerous situation, the mother does not care whether she will die or not while rescuing her child. She only thinks about saving her child. This is manifested in God's providence. With this kind of infinite love and sacrifice for us, our Heavenly Mother has been raising us and making us the heavenly people throughout 6,000 years of history from Adam to this very day. Just as a baby's eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and internal organs are formed in the mother's womb, we are now being recreated to become perfect. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Mother is the answer to this question. And Mother also becomes our stronghold in times of hardship and danger and trouble. Did you feel afraid when you were with your mother? Recall your childhood. When a dog barked at you, you were very scared. But if your mother was right beside you at that moment, you felt very safe, didn't you? Children are sure that their mothers will protect them. When they see a scary dog, they hide under their mother's skirts and do not look outside. It is the same with our Heavenly Mother. She gives us peace and safety. Mother is the answer to everything. She protects us when we are in danger. She leads us on a path of peace. She gives us eternal life. As for our human mothers, they do not take care of themselves but only care for us. Where does this loving nature come from? It comes from Heavenly Mother, right? In this regard, all mothers are worthy of much respect. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 5. Announce in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, Sound the trumpet throughout the land, cry aloud and say, Gather together, let us flee to the fortified cities, raise the signal to go to Zion, flee for safety without delay. Here, God tells us to gather together and flee to a certain place. What is it? Zion. He tells us to enter Zion quickly without delay. Let's see what is done in Zion. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 20. Look upon Zion, the city of our festivals. The Bible refers to spiritual Zion as the place where God's appointed feasts are observed. 
Look upon Zion, the city of our festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a peaceful abode, a tent that will not be moved. Its stakes will never be pulled up, nor any of its ropes broken. There, the Lord will be our Mighty One. Who dwells in Zion? The Bible tells us that God is there, in Zion, with us. Verse 22. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. It is He who will do what? Will save us. God tells us to enter Zion for our salvation. No one living in Zion will say, I am ill, and the sins of those who dwell there will be what? Will be forgiven. Our sins are forgiven in Zion. God dwells in Zion and tells us to quickly come to Zion. Is only Father calling us to Zion? In Revelation chapter 22, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come to Zion and take the free gift of the water of life. Only here in Zion will you receive life and be saved. In Isaiah chapter 33, we can see why God calls us to Zion. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make what? Make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Who is the one to make the new covenant? It is the Lord our Father. When we see someone establishing the new covenant, we should immediately recognize him, saying, Oh, he is our Father. There are many people on this earth even though there are over 7 billion people, there is no one other than God who establishes the new covenant. So God said, I will do it. The Lord declared, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It is not something that others can do. When we see someone establishing the new covenant, we must immediately recognize Him as our Father. We must recognize Him no matter how He looks when He comes. Verse 33, This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Forgiveness of sins is to be given through the new covenant and to be done by God who is with us in Zion. However, Father is not the only one who is in Zion. In Revelation chapter 22, who is there? the Spirit and the Bride. Not only God the Father, but also God the Mother called us. Since there is forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and the eternal heavenly family there, they have told us to come. That's why the process of God the Father and God the Mother creating us is described in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. We are the heavenly family. Since we have inherited the flesh and blood of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, we can receive eternal life and go to heaven as their children. In the Bible written by God, is there no mother in Galatians chapter 4, verse 26? Is there no mother in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26? In the Old Testament, the word Elohim is recorded more than 2,500 times. If mother did not exist, could the word be used? It is all because God the Mother exists. If they were only God the Father, the word Elohim could never be used. Because God the Mother exists, God is expressed as Elohim. Through all this, we can clearly see that there is Heavenly Mother and that Heavenly Mother is the way to everything for God's children. Babies whine a lot. There are various reasons why they whine. They whine when they are hungry or when their diapers are wet. They behave like this often. 
When a baby whines, his aunt or grandmother or relative or father holds the baby in his arms. If the baby does not stop whining despite that, what is the solution for that baby? When his mother comes and carries the baby in her arms, amazingly, his loud whining stops all at once. Mother is the solution. Mother is also the solution for our spirits. I earnestly ask you to boldly spread this solution to everyone and to save many souls and give glory to God. I hope you all receive abundant love and blessings from father and mother. And I will conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.